Being an, a search and rescue pilot on board, uh, there's just the three of us in the team. As, uh, one as a commanding officer plus two. And as such, we are duty one and three. And that works out that we are duty pilot for, say, a forenoon and then standby in the afternoon. Today, I'm the uh, duty SAR pilot, which means that uh, it's my job to fly the SAR helicopter during the Virtra, the vertical replenishment with Line S. Line S is a Royal Fleet Auxiliary. It's one of a number of ships which follow Ark Royal around on its deployments in various parts of the world. They carry various kinds of stores depending on the particular type of RFA it is. And it happens that Line S is the ship that carries the solid stores for Ark Royal. All the various foods, stuffs, beer and that sort of thing. So I will be flying to and fro at Line S. Top yet, Oscar? What's the weather like? It's cold. Yeah. When are you going to come flying with us? Well, as soon as we get a chance, so we, we keep asking, right? But we keep getting told old. Morning. Morning. What time are you going to get airborne for, seven? Eleven o'clock. Just depending, you can get it up on deck. I joined Ark Royal last year, and when I joined the ship, there were several wives on board Lioness at the time, which I thought was a marvellous idea. Immediately, I started making inquiries as to the possibility of getting a passage for my wife, Sheila, uh, for this year. This is purely at the discretion of the Commodore of Lioness, in fact. Uh, it's his ship, and he says who is allowed to do what. And at the moment, she is slightly under compliment, so there are several cabins vacant. So I put in a letter to the captain of Ark Royal requesting that I might bring my wife on this deployment. And I uh, obtained an indulgence passage for my wife, Sheila, on board Line S, on an opportunity basis, really. Because they are under-complemented, the cabins would have been travelling empty anyway. So we're not charged for accommodation. And what we are charged for, or what Sheila's charged for, is the food, in fact. Uh, she is charged, I think it's... It's one pound's 19 p a day. There's another pilot, in fact, from one of the squadrons. And he's arranged to have his wife on board at the same time. And there's just the two wives from Ark Royal on board Lioness at the moment. Being so close, there is a certain element of frustration that builds in. I sometimes wonder, as I'm flying over and I'm waving down and, and Sheila's looking up and waving at me, I wonder that you know what's going through her mind flashing past in an aeroplane, you know, past your wife as she's looking up. It gives me a Philip, obviously. I sometimes wonder, you know, what she was thinking at the same time. I think she gets a kick out of it, quite honestly. I don't think she considers that I might suddenly fall in the water, but I think the very fact that she can actually see me performing my job in some ways is better than actually being at home wondering what I'm doing. As far as my reaction goes, having her see me, you know, well, that's a bit, I suppose, red rag to a bull in some ways, you know. You've got to be very careful not to sort of say, well, we'll try and cut this corner a little bit tighter and show a little bit of flair, you know? There is an element of that, and you've got to restrain yourself. We have to bear in mind throughout all of this that uh, it's a military aeroplane that I'm flying around in, and it's a completely military environment. Can you see Cliff now? There are something like 250 other officers in the wardroom. And we are the only two who have our wives with us. So we get a certain amount of teasing and ribbing from the other people. I mean, Ark Royal now is spending seven and a half weeks at sea between um, 
regional visits. Now, you know, uh, sailors go through quite a traumatic phase when they're at sea for that length of time. And uh, if I'm able to go over to see my wife for a matter of several hours in the midst of all that, several times, then uh, the overtones are uh, quite obvious. I'm flying about two to two and a half hours this morning. If I do manage to get over later on, it'll be a tremendous excitement for me. I will feel a little tired, I must admit, you know, but uh, I'm sure she'll understand. secured to his deck has carried away and we think one of the deck fittings uh, broke and the whole boom slipped. They have caught it because the guys holding it just by the boat there. We have released our jacks there and we're now free from him. It was great danger to personnel. They could have been thrown over the side except that a safety net would have probably caught them. But it was quite a, a dangerous accident. I stopped the jack stay out. We'll have to continue with uh, Vertram, which is by helicopters. What's out the end there, Chef? Yes, them brown things. Pork chops. Nice. Like pork chops. There's a lot of pork chops up there, isn't there? Yeah. I've heard a buzz that all chefs are queer, is that right? Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I want to be a chef. I want to be a chef. <coughs> nah, I'll be. There are two wheels, at least on board, as far as I understand it. One of them is the captain. The other one is a little kind of demon, dwarf, ventriloquist dummy. It appears on the television. Andy, do you want to change position at all? Yeah, uh, up here. Can you get him behind that corner? Then I can shoot the troops coming in. And... Hey? Can you get him in there? The personify is uh, possibly the lower echelon of thought processes on board, and I don't mean that in a class conscious way at all. But uh, he uses very bad language. <laughs> But he does it in the nicest possible way. Hello, mate. Hi, Smithy. Hi there. All right. You been drinking Guinness again? Hey. What's that brown mark around your mouth? All right. He's a lovely boy. Does pick his nose. That's true. Can't understand it. Put it this way, they'll believe Wilf before they'll believe me. Uh, they think very rightly that he is very funny and uh, good entertainment value, which he is. You see, on the show, we use him with his silver jacket, don't we, you see? Which has got the slit in the back. But when I use the jumper, yeah, my arm comes in at a different angle, yeah. you see? Yeah. Yeah. I saw this, this sort of thing, that's all he is, a thing, really, advertised in this uh, children's magazine. And so I sent away for him, you know. When I got a draft to the Art Royal, 
I naturally brought Wilf along with me and uh, it was easy to sort of get him onto a show. What you need is a blue hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fleet Jossman phoned up one day, asked for uh, Arian Pooley. I got on the phone and he said, uh, he said, I hear there's a new chap on board who hasn't reported to the reg office yet. It's not on the ship's books. I asked him, well, I don't know what you mean, sir. And he said, this Wilf character. <laughs> So I said, oh, I see what you mean. He said, report him to the reg office at this moment. And in fact, we have got Wilf on the ship's books now, you know. He has, uh, he's got his own number. <laughs> also, Wilf's got his own telephone number in the Ark Roll telephone directory. That's the studio number, of course. People are phoning up and asking for Wilf now all the time, so... I'm sure a lot of blokes do accept Wilf as a real person. We've had presents sent down as well. Packets of jelly babies and... Uh, cards and things like this. Just like a children's program, and it's quite funny. The logical side of it is not quite right yet, is it? Yeah, well, uh, I reckon, I reckon if we... Most of the material I use is what the lads generally think of life on board the ship, and what they'd like to say themselves, but obviously they'd get in trouble if they did. Because if, if the lads had a go at an officer and sort of said, you know, well, what a wanker you are, I mean, they'd be in cells, you know, or they'd have a fine and punishment, you see. If Wilf says it, you know, they clap their hands and say, great, you know, <laughs> Wilf's giving me a mention type of thing, you know, they, they think it's good. I know the skipper watches Wilf every week. One particular Saturday evening, he must have pressed the wrong tuna button on his TV set and he was creating hell. He wanted to watch the Wolf show and his TV wasn't working. We had to get a chap out there pretty quick, you know, to do it. But I think the skipper does accept Wolf as a big morale booster to his crew. Morning, sir. We've come to do our little bit of filming. It's okay with you. Ships! Which made? I think the captain. Definitely must be a good sport to put up with what we we push out, you know. To see his officers sort of slandered in the way that Wolf does does come out with it, although it's only in good fun, you know. I think he, he's worked it out that it's all in good fun, completely all in good fun, you know. There's no nastiness about it at all. Morning, big Wolf. Morning, Wolf. How's things? Pretty good, thanks. I'm glad you come up to help me. Well, I thought you might need a bit of help, you know. Oh, yeah, no, one 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 who's, that, who's that bloke over there talking down the thing? That's the officer watch. Is it? 210. 210. Oh, so what's he got? Oh, he's got uh, the forenoon watch. Oh, he's doing a good job. Makes a change in there, doesn't it? Usually loafing all down the water, and they are. They sit down there sleeping all afternoon. Anyway, I'll tell you what, Big Wolf. What we was wondering is if I could do some rounds for you as well. I know you're busy up there. Yeah, that's a good idea. You could do some of the rounds instead of me. Can I do that? That could just the job. All right, then. Thanks very much. Right out. Come again. Certainly. Got it. Right, stop, stop. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. You I've got cramp in my leg and in my neck. <laughs> yeah, it was coming out great. Sir. Cheers, sir. That came out, did it? Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have thought me about turning your legs. <laughs> <laughs> The last time they did a RAS, they were only on for 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, and then they were called back because of fog. I've got a story to tell you, like, in a minute. <laughs> well, look, shall I get rid of all this stuff? Yep. Put it in the yeah, camera. Yeah. And, uh, see you. In... We'll see you back in here in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Oh.
back short. You're doing a great job there, Padre. Well, he is. Look at him. Just, just look at him. Well done, sir. Well done. You got me stuck now. <laughs> We're not here. I know. The alpha, the alpha bit's gone wrong. Let's all have a read. See you all later then. Hi, Jockey. Jock Davis at the mill, obviously. Could you send a shirt and collect the some of the wardroom mail, please? I've got a chopped up bag for them. Come on. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a parcel bag for them, alright? Uh, Apio Thorpe, make a point. Mail is now ready for collection. Don't say that there's uh, to carry a receptacle. The commander don't like it. He thinks you might be carrying a piss pot. Sick, mate. Thanks, Watercom. 3K5. 3K5. Come on, my handsome. Stand on side then. Let's get in a nice, tidy, orderly little queue and then we can all get our mail. Throw the wardroom back over, please. And five uniform mess, please. Six Delta. Next one. Wardrooms. And you want five uniform? Yes, please. Six big. Two golf one. Okay. Two golf one. Six guys still there. Five uniform, yeah. please. One back, another Six mate. Another 20 minutes. Okay, leading reg. Sorry, up here. Come on, quickly, shake it up. Another lot like that, 6F please. 6F? Oui. Come on, move over. You people that are not collecting mail, get out of it. Go on, on your way. We're not 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 my dearest darling Gordon, it's not two weeks since you sailed and it feels like months. But I've sorted two photographs and I'll send you Dearest Joe, later. I'm glad you like the Valentine's card. Of course, yes. you're meant to be the sailor in the picture. I'm glad the hairs on your chest are growing more and more. The more the better. Please, Joe, be careful at work. I would like you to come back to me in one piece. I'm proud of you and of where you're going. God bless and keep you in his care always. All I love, Mum, Dad, Angela, John, Jeffrey, and the rabbit. Dear darling Mike, don't worry, I will tell you everything that happens when I've had the baby. Okay, love? I wish you would hurry up and come. I'm beginning to get sick of waiting. I've washed the pram and cot and I've packed my suitcase. Now I'm all ready to go. I hope you are taking care of yourself. I don't want anything to happen to you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Afternoon, sir. The mail. That, I reckon, is the private and the government side of life. Oh, thank you. I think that's all there is to come, but there's still quite a bit being sorted. Down the Good. Thank you. My precious husband, I was so glad to get a letter from you this morning, written last Saturday. I don't know how you ever get enough sleep. Right. Yeah. Off the watch, come up to 100 revs. Revolutions are 100. Zero, zero. My precious husband, I was so glad to get a letter from you this morning, written last Saturday. I don't know how you ever get enough sleep. The weather is cold, gloomy and grey, however, somehow... Oh. Well, it wasn't uh, a great success. Regrettably, I had a communications problem at the last moment, just with making that final approach. Stop it also. I was trying not to use the star, you know, a star, but it was overheating. Sorry. Uh, okay. Right, sir. Fine. Yeah. 
The weather is cold, gloomy and grey. Somehow we get used to it. I went to a swinging party at the Thomases on Sunday and then went to Aldro to see John Wilcox's slides on Oberammergau. They were lovely and Charlie and I both enjoyed seeing familiar buildings, etc. Charlie seemed in good form. I hope to goodness he gets his common entrance. Excuse the formation, please, sir. Yes, please. I don't really care about the scholarship, though it'd be good for him if he did. <laughs> Dear son, it's about my granny, this one. It's from my memory. It's about my granny. Oh, that's right. Dear son, your granny had the mantelpiece took out yesterday. I don't know what took out. A mantelpiece. Oh. Did she have an you anaesthetic? Know. No. She had, a, <laughs> <laughs> she had a new sink and false teeth put in. It's, it's been called up in Manchester. Oh, has it? Yeah. Oh. I've got it's a great mother and father. And Get him where it's warmer. I can't find words to put it. Believe me, I really do love it. Oh, it's not nice. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh yeah, the milkman. Sorry, the milkman sent his love, and he says, "I hope you're eating a lot of cornflakes." <laughs> 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 you know, what a little Valentine, eh? So, cheerio for now, God bless, and all who's selling you. <laughs> <laughs> My mummy knows something I don't know. <laughs> and now, the show you've all been waiting to see, may I introduce the fabulous Wilf Show. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Hello, you winkers out there. It's the Wilco again. Just for a change on a Saturday night. Anyway, I'll tell you what, what we'll do... I'm going to cut to one. At the end of the joke, I want you to pull out quick onto the both of them again, Sam. Right, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Uncle John's just come back from having a piss. So, if you lock and slide out, and then we'll get him in. Now, I was going to ask you what you've been doing this week. I went up to see Big Wilf. Oh, Big Wilf. Yeah, and on the bridge that was. And uh, we had a good chat out there, me and him. Yeah. Nice chat, isn't he? He is, a nice bloke. Nice Picks his nose, though. Picks his nose? Trouble. Yeah. Hi, oh, yeah, here yeah, comes yeah. the story. Yeah. Not one of our type of pilots. Going through to one. Uh, Camera two, can you pull in on Wilf for the story? Hold it there, touch left. Hold it there. Yeah. Two's going live. Yeah. All you wankers out there, we all entertainment. We have, on my left, in the blue corner, Jim Ray! Hooray! 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 Well, what's a tone? Nobby, what's a tone? You know, wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you've got to do is call, and I'll be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a friend. You've got a friend. You got a friend. You got a friend. Great, oh, eh? Hey? That was terrific, Jim. Well, oh, thanks, Jim Reeves. Thanks for coming down. He's good, isn't he? He is good. I'll tell you what. What? He's better than those bootnecks that were down before, wasn't he? What, the Winker Band? The Winker Band, yeah. No, they're good. They're my favourites, the Winker Band. They'd be better when they can read music, though, wouldn't they? Right. Let's go. A couple more birthdays. A couple more birthdays, yeah? Yeah. Because I've got a special one today. A special birthday? Yeah. Go on, then. It's for Jeff Newman, who works down here, the boss man. He was 27 yesterday, the 12th. Hooray! So we give two winks to Uncle Jeff. Like that. All right? 
Yeah. Anyway, ready? One, two, three, four. Once a boy was no good, took a girl into the wood. Boy, boy, blackbird. <laughs> Second verse, ready? But this girl was no sport, took her story to the court. Told her story in the morn. <laughs> Judge, he came to his decision. This poor sod got 18 months in prison. So next time, boy, do it right. <laughs> right, you lot, that's it. You can all piss off now, and I'll see you next week. Trying to struggle under this table. Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>